This presentation is a part of a lecture series on the C++ programming language by Michael Adams at the University of Victoria in Victoria, Canada. For those of you who might be interested, a copy of the slides for this lecture series can be downloaded from the website whose URL is given at the bottom of this slide. In this section of the lecture materials, I'm going to be discussing very briefly how the standard library can be used to perform time measurement. The standard library has a number of time measurement capabilities, and these capabilities are associated with the header file chrono. So if you want to use any of these time measurement functionalities, you need to include the header file chrono. The identifiers for time measurement are in the std chrono namespace. And there's sort of three key concepts that are important to understand as far as time measurement is concerned. There's what's called a time point, which as the name suggests, is just a specific point in time. And it's measured relative to some epoch. In other words, some point that's considered the beginning of time. A duration is a time interval. Essentially, it's the difference between two time points. And then a clock is an entity that measures the time in terms of time points. So you ask the clock what time it is, and it gives you back a time point to identify the particular point in time that you're at. And there are a number of different clocks that are provided for measuring time in the standard library, which have various different properties. And I'm only going to be giving an overview of the chrono part of the standard library. There's quite a lot of functionality. I'm only going to sort of scratch the surface. For more information beyond what I cover here, you can refer to the two links at the bottom of this slide. On this slide, I've listed a few of the key types that are associated with the std chrono namespace. So the first types that are listed here are associated with time points and intervals. There's a template class called duration, which is used to represent time intervals. There's another template class called time point, which is used to represent points in time. And then there's a few clock types, which are used to represent various clocks that can be used for measuring time. The first of these is called system clock, which corresponds to the operating system's clock that's normally used for measuring uh, real time. There is steady clock, which is a monotonic clock. In other words, it's a clock that's guaranteed to increase monotonically with time. You might say, well, wait a minute, shouldn't all clocks be monotonic? Well, not necessarily, because most operating systems, for, for example, allow you to change the time. If you change the time, you might change it in a backwards direction, which would cause the clock not to be monotonic. So not all clocks are necessarily guaranteed to be monotonic, but this one, steady clock, is. And then lastly, we have high resolution clock, which is the clock that has the finest granularity of time measurement that's available on the system. And typically, if you want to do very accurate timing measurements, this might be the clock that you would choose. On this slide, I have a code example illustrating the measuring of elapsed time using the chrono functionality in the standard library. So let's look at this code example in more detail. To begin with, you'll notice that I include the header file chrono. This is necessary to pick up any declarations and definitions related to the chrono functionality from the standard library. Then in this code example, I have a function called get result. What this function is actually computing is really not that important. The main point is that it's something that takes a fair amount of time. And basically what we want to do is measure how much time this function get result takes to execute. So in the main function below, what we're going to do is we're going to get the current time, then call the function get result, and then get the current time again and take the difference between these two times to find out how much time get result took to execute. So the way we get the time is we're going to use the high resolution clock because it's the one that has the finest granularity. It's the clock with the finest granularity. Therefore, it can give us the most accurate measurements for time. And to get the time, we call the now member function for this clock, which returns a time point. Uh, for the purposes of saving typing, I've used auto here but the, the type is actually a time point that's returned by the now member function. And we save the return value in start time. So it's a time point that corresponds to the, 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 the starting time for our timing measurements. Then we invoke the get result function. And then after it returns, we again invoke the now member function for the high resolution clock, which again returns a time point, which corresponds to the current point in time with respect to the high resolution clock. And we save this into end time. Then what we do next is we take the difference between these two time points, end time and start time, converting them into a, a duration which is represented in terms of a double uh, with a time period which is one second. This is a defaulted template parameter that's not here, but basically it's indicating that the time is measured in units of one second. And then we count how many units of one second there are and assign this to elapsed time. So elapsed time will, will be the actual difference between the end time and the start time expressed in seconds. And then we simply print out the result that was calculated and print out the elapsed time. 